I'm going to do something a little different this time, and um, I have a couple of scripts that are proof of concept only, and I've put them into a uh, GitHub repository for you. So, uh, and they and they take advantage of these triggers I'm about to talk about. So, uh, you might be familiar with uh, coding triggers in um, when you perform an insert, update, or delete on a table. You can put a trigger on the table and then specify that the trigger is for an update and then you get like uh, a, a deleted and an inserted record set that you can use to figure out what happened plus uh, some additional functions. And this is a DML trigger, which is a data manipulation language, which is insert, update, and delete. But there are these other triggers, which are DDL triggers. Uh, DDL is a data definition language, and it's kind of like uh, making schema changes. This is create, alter, drop, grant. And when you create one of these triggers, you're creating it on the server or at the database level within a server. And then instead of insert, update, or delete, you can specify a, uh, an event type, which there's a very long list of these, uh, a lot of groups. And, um, and I'll get into that a little bit later. Plus, there are these uh, login triggers, which only have one choice login, which is very nice. I'm not going to go into those at this point. Uh, let's go take a look at an example here. And here's one. It's on the database, and the event is drop synonym. And in this trigger, it has rollback. So basically, it's preventing you from dropping synonyms. And it gives you a little message here saying that you have to disable this trigger called safety before you can make a change to the synonym, before you could drop the synonym. All right. So I'm going to demonstrate one of these triggers. This is at the uh, server level. And the event I'm going to use is DDL events, which is the top level event. And that means that any event, any DDL instruction on this server is going to get, is going to fire this trigger and is going to select this function called event data. And then we'll get a good look at it. So. Let's cause this to fire by creating a table. All right, so it fired and it did a select on the result of that function, event data, and it looks like XML. So I click on it and you can see, sure enough, it's XML. And if you go far enough down, you'll see this line that says command text. And here is that select I just executed. And the reason this fired is because a table was created. And that's what I did in this into A here. So I should be able to find a table. And I can see when it was fired, who fired it, and uh, a bunch of other neat stuff that I could keep track of. So wouldn't it be nice if you just insert every time that trigger fires, just take the results of this function and write it into a table. And, and I've already done that. I have a table here. Hopefully I can find it. Here it is. And if I select from it, you'll see that it's just full of XML in it, and then I can open up any one of these and see what the event was. So I'll uh, parse out the command here with the nodes XML function, which works with the cross apply join. And nodes just needs a path to the command. And then I'll put the uh, query XML function in the select list. And uh, that just returned 
more XML, but it's just the command text. Let's modify this to make it a little bit nicer. There, there we go. Now the results are just the commands that were executed. And since I've created this trigger, I should probably show you where to find it. And it's in these um, server objects here. You'll see triggers. And I'll refresh this. And there's the trigger I just created. This one is mine, and this one came with SQL Server. We can also select them from the server triggers table. And here's the trigger that came with SQL Server. And if I scroll all the way over, you'll see it says is MS shipped. And here's the trigger that I just created. Now I should show you the list of, of events that you can enter here. Like I say, this is the top level event that I enter here. So um, let me show you the list of all the events. Now, this is not a very convenient list, but you can see it has create, alter, uh, drop on a table, and that happens consistently through here, create, alter, drop, view. And you can see that it has a parent. Um, that is a group. So you can see, like, there's a few of these that have 18 on them. Let's get down to the groups here. If I go to that first group, there's the top level event. And um, it's 10,001. You can see that um, there's a couple that have 10,001 as a parent. And if I look down this list far enough, I'll see 10,001. This is database level. I don't want I don't want server level events. I'm gonna I'm gonna make a, a trigger on a database, so I'm gonna need this one here. And you know what, instead of this select here, I'm just going to print something out. Now, it just returned that XML because I have that server level event. But if I make a change to this d database, I will also get a printout of DDL change. If I go to the messages, there it is, DDL change. And I should show you where I can find that as well. In the database program ability, you'll see database triggers. And I'll refresh that. And there's the trigger I just made. So just to give you a few ideas of what uh, DDL triggers might be good for is, uh, let's say I showed you in that, in that uh, documentation that it blocks. You can use it to block certain DDL changes by doing a rollback. Um, I, you could use it for trapping all DDL changes and keeping a record of them. You can also use it for doing automatic testing, in other words, you make a change to your schema and that can trigger a test. And I have scripts for doing these things. So here's my uh, GitHub. And if you go to my name, Chuck Newman JR, you'll find a repository called DDL Event Triggers. And it contains three files. Two are scripts, and one is a, uh, a, uh, a, a management studio custom report, which I'll demonstrate in a minute. And these two scripts, one is for uh, capturing all of the changes in, in my entire server, and another one is for issuing tests. Now, if you want this code, the easiest way to do that is come over here to this clone or download, and then you can just click download zip. 
uh, when when you uh, run the change tracking script, it will create a database called tools, and then it puts a bunch of tables inside of it. One is that scripting table that I showed you contains all the XML. Um, but if I were to show you what's in here, uh, I'll select one of these views, and you can see it. has the XML already parsed for you and you can see here the instructions over here and what type of object was changed, what the name of the object was, who did the change, it's always me, and what the change was. Uh, but this is, this is a lot of data. One thing you can do is you can take a look at all the objects that just a list of the objects that have been affected by DDL instructions, and, and here's a complete list of the objects. So let's say I were to pick um, one of these. Um, I'm going to pick a uh, procedure, get test results in P get test results. And if I right click it and choose reports, this is where the custom report comes in, and I added that report by clicking custom reports, and you'll see how that works if you try it out. Uh, by the way, you can write your own custom reports by looking at one of my other videos that shows how to do that. So here's the report, and it shows, here's an alter, 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 alter. Here's a drop and a create. Let's say I wanna go back a version, and I wanna rerun 1232 and 1233, I can do that. Rerun DDL events. So it says, all of these commands succeeded and were rolled back. C is rollback parameter. So let's say I don't want to roll them back. I don't want to roll back. There, done. All right, let's demonstrate the test suite. I'll delete that trigger because I don't want to see that message anymore and the one on the server. Okay, for the test suite, I only have a few tests in here and I can see they're all due for a, another test and um, I can also see a summary of what's in here and it says I have four tests and they're all the status is test so they all have to be retested and the way that works is I have a um, schedule set up in here run test suite so it should run but I don't want to wait so I'm going to force a run Now let's see if that updated it. So I can see that three succeeded and one failed. And actually this one's intended to fail. I can, it, it has, um, the result is intended to end up different than, than the expected results of the test. And in the script, you'll see um, um, how to set up tests. So basically what's happening is anytime a, um, uh, now, let's say I were to make a change to something here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to modify this and just execute it. Now, that just performed a DDL change. So if I go take a look at that test suite again, 
I can see they've all been put back into, into test status. And so that's how that works. So if you have any trouble running the scripts, it may be because I have some 2016 code in there because I'm running on uh, SQL Server 2016 and I'm using this new syntax where you can say create or alter. Plus I'm using, in some cases, the drop if exists. That way I don't have to check if it exists first. So that's it. Thank you very much.